In the early 1900s, the British company White Star Line had intended to operate their Olympic-class liners, Olympic, Titanic and Britannic, regularly across the Atlantic. However, things did not go as planned at all. The Titanic was lost after colliding with an iceberg on her maiden voyage on the night of April 14, 1912 taking with her over 1,500 souls. While the Britannic was lost due to an underwater mine explosion on the morning of November 21, 1916, while serving as a hospital ship in the Aegean for the war. The White Star Line also had lost the Oceanic, another reliable vessel, at war in 1914. With the Olympic returning to service in 1920, the line observed the ship did not have any running mates to share the service with. The Treaty of Versailles guaranteed that the White Star Line and other companies of the victorious nations had the right to ask Germany for vessels as war reparations. One of the liners received by them was the Bismarck, third liner in the Imperator class, which was completed and later renamed Majestic. The White Star Line also took the 34,000 ton SS Columbus, which was situated at F. Chicago at Danzig, Dansk, Poland. The ship was launched on the 17th of December 1913 as one of two vessels ordered by the company Norddeutsche Lloyd, North German Lloyd to serve a route from Bremenhaven to New York. At the time of her launch, the Columbus was the world's largest twin screw vessel to be powered by reciprocating engines. The UK company purchased the vessel in 1920 while still unfinished, renaming her RMS Homeric. Construction of the ship resumed that same year under supervision from Harland and Wolf engineers. The construction was moving on slow due to shortages of materials and dissatisfaction of the German workers over having to hand over the vessel. In late 1921, the ship was completed and handed over. Her trials demonstrated stability in difficult weather. The Homeric entered service by 1922. On the 21st of January 1922, the Homeric, painted in her white star colors, arrived at Southampton, England, to depart for her maiden voyage to New York on February 15th. The Homeric served alongside running mate Olympic, which was still considered one of the world's best vessels. They were joined by the RMS Majestic in May of that year, thus completing White Star's plans for a three-ship service. This allowed the White Star Line to fully compete with rival Cunard Line, who had their Mauritania, shown here, Aquitania and Berengaria, ex-Imperator, Majestic sister ship, next to photos. Though very popular with White Star passengers, the company couldn't brag about Homeric speed. The ship could reach speeds of 18 knots, 21 miles per hour, 33 kilometers per hour, which was average in the least compared to the achievements of her running mates, able to sail at over 21 knots, 24 miles per hour, 39 kilometers per hour each. After her second crossing season concluded in October 1923, the Homeric was taken for a winter overhaul, converted to oil, 
reducing engine room personnel from 300 to 100. Despite the overhaul requiring 8 months, the ship returned to service on the 19th of April 1924, now having an average speed of 19.5 knots, 22.4 miles per hour, 36.1 kilometers per hour. Though the slight increase in speed did decrease her average voyage by a day, it was still far from enough to compete with her rival. On an August 1924 voyage, the Homeric encountered a hurricane of the East U.S. coast, thus arriving to New York late. The vessel had been hit by an 80-foot, 24-meter rock wave, resulting in seven people getting injured, as well as extensive damage to windows, portholes, chairs, and other parts of the vessel. One of her lifeboats had even been carried away, shown here. A corridor aboard Khmer. On the 19th of April 1925, the RMS Khmer received a distress call from Japanese cargo ship Raifuku Maru. The call stated, Now very dangerous, come quick. The Raifuku Maru had developed a severe list and was rapidly taken on water, being about 70 miles, 110 kilometers away. The Homeric sped for help at 20 knots. But when the ship arrived to help, the freighter was already listening at 30 degrees, and due to difficult weather conditions, the Homeric could not come any closer to her crew. The same weather resulted in the Raifu Kumaru's lifeboats being smashed to pieces, rendering any attempts to escape unsuccessful. The crew and passengers aboard the liner ended up helplessly observing the sinking of the Raifu Kumaru as she took with her all 38 lives on board. This event sparked controversy as the Homeric passengers gave statements to the press in one they accused the crew of not trying hard enough to save those in peril. The crew was even said to have exhibited racism, according to the press in Japan. All of this was denied. Many of the ship's features were created with the immigration flow in mind as the liner participated in what was called the steer trade. When the U.S. enforced restrictions on immigration in the 1920s, Homeric was one of the worst affected victims. By 1926, the vessel began to lose money and that same year, the best accommodations in her third class were being referred to by the newly popular term tourist class. From the slack season of 1927, the ship began to undertake Caribbean and Mediterranean pleasure cruises, and three years later, her second class was renamed to as a tourist class. Her cabins were as well renamed to attract more passengers while after the fall of the Sierra trade, the capacity was decreased. By 1930, the Great Depression was spreading like the plague, affecting many businesses, including the Atlantic trade, with passenger numbers having dramatically decreased. The three-ship service very soon became due. It was then that the White Star Line decided to withdraw the Homeric from transatlantic service, transitioning her to permanent cruising. Her final transatlantic voyage began on the 10th of June, 1932, from New York, with the ship heading for Southampton. She only had a chance to provide true Atlantic service for a decade. The ship undertook cruises from the United Kingdom to the Mediterranean, becoming one of the first permanent cruise ships. Ships like Kuhner's Mauritania, shown here, and the former German Vaterland, now renamed Leviathan, would later follow in her footsteps. The Homeric was once again refitted, 
This time, a Lido deck and an outdoor swimming pool were added to make her more suitable for cruising. She quickly became a success, attracting many passengers. On the 28th of September 1932, the Homeric was anchored near the island of Tenerife in Spain. The small ship Isla de Tenerife, owned by Sia Transmediterranea, had a steering problem which resulted in her slamming into the side of the Homeric's bow. Luckily, the latter vessel was not seriously damaged, continuing her cruise. Even though Homeric's cruise career was successful, the financial situation of her company became increasingly bleak after 1930. After the 1934 merger of White Star and rival Cunard, several older ships were disposed of, including the aforementioned Olympic and Mauritania. While Homeric was supposed to have been one of them, she was initially left in the fleet as her cruise season was highly booked. Later, in July of 1935, the ship took part in the King George V's Silver Jubilee Fleet Review, which is a great honor for any vessel. On the 25th of September 1935, her final cruise came to an end, after which she was laid up at Wright Isle of Wight, awaiting a decision on her fate. Initially, there were talks of putting her in service with her sister, which was renamed Columbus, as this was the original name of the Homeric. But in February of 1936, she was finally sold for scrap, sailing to Inverkithing, Scotland, in March. This was her final destination. As of today, some of Homeric's interiors can be found in places such as the former Rex Cinema in Stonehouse, Scotland. The building is currently used for storage purposes, with only selected visitors allowed by its owners. The BBC program Time Shift featured the Homeric in the second episode of their ninth series regarding the Golden Age of Liners. The second vessel of the Columbus class was originally planned to be named Hindenburg, but after the original Columbus was taken by the British and renamed Homeric, the second vessel of the class took her name. Due to shortages of materials during and after World War I, the Columbus was only finished in 1922, with her maiden voyage taking place in April of 1924. At that time, she was considered the fastest and largest ocean liner in Germany. A firm known as the Cook's Travel Agency of New York had taken the Columbus for a few years, during which time she cruised near West India. The cruises took place about every two weeks, while the vessel also sometimes visited Africa and South America. A night dancing platform as well as an outdoor swimming pool were installed on Columbus, making her one of the first vessels to have these things. Her triple expansion steam engines made her successful enough for the NDL, her company, to positively reconsider building large liners. As the new liners SS Bremen and SS Europa, shown here, were being built, the SS Columbus was considered a very important asset in the NDL, Norddeutsche Lloyd fleet. 1929 saw the vessel being refitted to become a lookalike of the new, larger and faster ships. Two larger funnels were installed and gear steam turbines replaced the reciprocating engines. On the 20th of June 1939, the Columbus departed Bremenhaven, Germany, and in September of that year was ordered to immediately return, 
due to the outbreak of the Second World War and the fact that the British Royal Navy was hunting enemy ships down. With her passengers evacuated in Havana, Cuba, the crew headed for Veracruz, Mexico, managing to avoid any British attacks. Early November came with orders to try performing a blockade run to Germany, and on the 14th of December, seven U.S. destroyers escorted the Columbus as she left Mexico following the neutral zone at U.S. shores. On the 19th of the month, 400 miles off Virginia, the Columbus was spotted by British destroyer HMS Hyperion. The vessels were both being observed by the U.S. cruiser Tuscaloosa, CA-37. Not wanting to surrender, the crew of the Columbus scuttled their ship, after which it burned and sank. The crew and passengers on board were taken to the American ship in a rescue. There were a total of 576 crew members, among them nurses, boys, and stevedores. All of them were taken by the USS Tuscaloosa as people rescued from peril, rather than prisoners of war. The latter scenario would have been more likely had they boarded the British vessel. All of them were sent to New York City. On the 18th of January 1940, 512 of the crew were moved to Angel Island, California, and in October of that year, eight officers escaped on the Japanese ship Asama Maru. Next picture. The following year, 411 German nationals that had been on the Columbus were sent to Fort Stanton, New Mexico, from where many were later able to return home. 